I'm real excited about Kane. Uh, Kane is a uh, straight Lajero cigar. Uh, it's made from uh, three different uh, regions of uh, Nicaragua, where Lajero comes from. Uh, in making a, a, a cigar of straight Lajero, uh, obviously, it, you know, when you hear the word straight Lajero, you think, you know, mass strength and, and even harshness and, and, a, and a rough edge. And uh, in order to, to create a cigar that is, is smokable and enjoyable, uh, we uh, fermented the tobacco three times, so it's triple fermented. Uh, so the, 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 the Lajero goes to uh, Cinepilone for fermentation is about 120 degrees. It gets dropped down to room temperature. Um, it's tested, it's smoked. It goes back down to fermentation or back up to fermentation at 120 degrees. We do this three times. Um, and what that does is it really allows the cigar uh, or allows the tobacco to be quite complex. It knocks the, the rough edge right off the Lajero. And uh, you're getting an unbelievably smooth cigar that is surprisingly complex. It's not a one-dimensional cigar, um, considering that it is, uh, you know, a straight Lajero cigar. Uh, so we're really excited about it. In, in every box um, of Cane, is going to be a brochure. Uh, we've actually put the blend uh, on the brochure. It's stamped on the box. So if you want to try to make it, here's the ingredients. Um, <laughs> But anything you'd want to know about Kane is going to be in the box. So, you know, a lot of cigar guys want to know as much information as they can, and, and you know, usually the information is limited. And this is giving the, the cigar smoker anything he'd ever want to know about the brand, um, how he came up with it, and why. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited about giving you know this much information with a cigar. So. Now that booklet is what about six, eight pages? Yeah, like that. sure. But sure. everything you'd ever want to know about everything. Kane is in there. Right. Well, it's making cane. It's the regions of, of, of Nicaragua we're using, the architecture, the flavor range. Um, you know, it's just some good. It's a good. Uh, it's a good read. And uh, like I said, those are going to be in every box of cane. Uh, let, me, let me ask you this: You've done so. You've done. You've done nub, and uh, you know we now have cane. Nub is obviously kind of a content cigar. Uh, there was there was a science behind it. There's a there's a real explanation behind it uh, to kind of tell the, the the everyday cigar smoker, you know, what the science is behind why it is so good. Sure. Cane is the same exact way with uh, with with the, with the straight Lajero, but it's it's a uh, you know there's a science behind that. What's uh, where where do you get the innovation? You know. Well, I I just you know I don't have six generations of tobacco growing. I, I don't. Uh, that's not my background. You know, I, I come from the liquor industry. Um, but I've been a cigar smoker, uh, you know, since high school, and I, I, it's really a, a cigar dork, uh, to, to, to say the least. I used to take cigars apart, and I would, you know, do Frankenstein type. Uh, sorry, Pete, I didn't mean Frankenstein. But the, I would do, uh, you know, make cigars out of other people's blends. I would take wrappers of cigars I'd like, I transplant them on cigars, you know, I didn't like as much. To see what it is I did like and didn't like about tobacco, and then I would make blends from other people's stuff. Just, just. Just be silly, and so that's what got me into to making the nub. And then I wanted to make a cigar out of straight Lajero. Um, well, in, in doing that, you know, you're, you're really testing the boundaries of, of the tobacco, uh, of what you know is really smokable and, and sellable at the same time. So you have to you come up with an idea, and then you see, well, can it work? I mean, you should see the ideas that, that haven't worked yet. So <laughs> you know, uh, it's uh, it's it's been it's just been exciting. It's been wild to, to see this whole thing transform. So. Where, where, where is uh, your background? I mean, you, you mentioned you came from the, uh, from the liquor industry. How did you get involved with uh, Oliva and with, with, uh, with, with the business? Well, I, uh, you know, I spent seven years. I worked for Jack Daniels and worked with uh, Bacardi, worked with some, some great uh, liquor brands. So were you doing sales for them? I was marketing. Okay. Uh, and I have done uh, a lot of tie-ins with cigars and, and spirits because I was such a cigar smoker. So I was always looking to tie in my product with cigars just so that I can smoke cigars at the events I did. Um, and now I'm tying in Jack Daniels with, with my cigar events, so I'm, it's a win-win. But um, I, uh, again, always just was blown away by the industry. Visited my first factory in 2000 and could not believe that just the, I mean, passion gets tossed around uh, a little loose in this, in this industry. And, and, but to see what goes on in a factory and the fact that the, the tobacco touches 250 to 300 pairs of hands before it's a cigar. And you're dealing with a cigar that's, you know, six to eight dollars a piece. And it's, it's amazing what goes into a cigar. And I, I think uh, for the most part, anyone that's been to a factory can attest to this. I think it changes you in some way. Uh, it really gives you a, a large appreciation for, for a cigar, uh, for what it takes to make it, um, for the, the just the, the heritage and the tradition that goes behind it. So once I went to a factory, I was, I was really heated to, to get into the industry. I had run into Jose uh, about a year, and 
and a half before coming on board. And we had a long talk about a lot of different things. And um, I had called him and you know see what was going on. And you know he offered me a position. It was a it was a demotion and position and a, and a quite a salary cut. But it was my in, and uh, it was something I've always wanted to do. So I took the risk, and, and fortunately, uh, where I sit today, it's definitely paid off for me. So I'd say so. I, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that it worked out the way it did. And I really can't thank the Oliva family. Enough. They allow me to be me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, 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 with all that, all that passion that goes into, 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 into the creation of cigars and the enjoyment of cigars, is it, does it infuriate you to see that passion kind of uh, uh, sullied or threatened by, by things like legislation? I don't think that's ever going to go away, um, the legislation or the passion. Um, I, and, and in reality, you know, as much as I don't like it, and we can go on and on and, and complain about it and, and you know, talk with our lobbyists and all that, but just, just from me to you, um, we still have the least expensive cigars in the world. And the legislation and taxes are, are, are even, and the markup is much worse uh, overseas. And uh, so, you know, I don't like it. Um, I wish it didn't happen, but it's here. I don't think it's slowing anything down. You know, they're, they're finding ways to still make it work. Um, people aren't going to stop smoking cigars. It's just not going to happen. And I think there's going to be a tipping point too, where, where it's going to reach where they've gotten everything they can, and things will things will come back in our favor eventually. So I, I, you know, it is what it is. We just got to deal with it and work with it. But I don't. No one's going to not smoke cigars. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. They're not going to stop me. <laughs> I think you made that pretty fair. <laughs>